Shalom, and welcome to Darche Choshech, Pathways of Darkness, a linguistic analysis of the wrong pro paths of Proverbs. Today we will cover the simpleton. In Proverbs 14.12 and Proverbs 16.25, it tells us, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are ways of death. And as a companion piece to the words listed in Psalm 119, which are positive ways to go and teach us to remain in the ways of Yahweh, we are going to discuss from in this series the ways which are the wrong ways to go. There are many ideas behind the pathway to sin, and we're going to try and trace those in some kind of logical order. It teaches in James 1.14 that every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So it's not like a believer can just one day wake up and find himself in the depths of iniquity. There is a pathway that uh, might take a person toward that goal. And we aim to trace the footsteps of this wrong pathway. The first word we're going to discuss is petty. And this means uh, either simple or foolish. And this is probably the most basic idea of starting to go off in a wrong direction. Proverbs 7, 7. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among youths, a young man void of understanding. So we see that this person who is called petty, the simple or foolish person, has no understanding. Proverbs 14, 15. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. So the simpleton, the foolish person, is easily swayed by every word that is spoken. Proverbs 22, 3. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself. But the simple passed on and are punished. Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. So in every place, the Father does not leave us without a remedy for any kind of mistake that any person might make. But he teaches us if we would have the wor his words, then we would have understanding. The word... Petty comes from a verb root, pata, which means to be spacious or wide open. It's only used once in this uh, meaning, and that is in Genesis 9, 27. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So the idea of making something wide or large, which is also where Yapheth, Japheth, where his name comes from, and in fact, we see that in the travels of the descendants of Yafet, perhaps they're the people that went into Europe and they opened that area, spread wide their tents there in uh, the area of Europe. Deuteronomy 11.16 Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. So the idea behind this is that when we are wide open, like I said earlier about the simple one, he just will receive every word. And if you receive every word from every place, you can become deceived. This verb root, pata, more frequently means to be enticed or deceived. Again, from the idea of words. In 1 Kings 22, 21, the scene is that Ahab and Jehoshaphat are going to be in a battle together the king of Israel and the king of Judah. And uh, I think they really want to go fight this battle and they're looking for uh, a prophet to come uh, validate their desire to fight the battle. And all the evil prophets, of course, are saying, of course, you may go, you may go. And uh, we are pr privileged to see a scene in heaven where God is looking for a spirit to go um, and lie to to Ahab that it's okay for them to go. And the spirit stands up and, uh, and he says, 
Uh, he stands before Yahweh and he said, I will persuade him. In other words, I will persuade Ahab to go fight this battle in which Ahab's about to lose his life. So this is the verb, pata. I will open him up to this idea. In Psalm 78, 36, Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. So flattery, if you're wide open and somebody tells you what a great job you're doing, you are a simple person. You are a foolish person. The word pata, from which the word petty comes, this idea of a simple a fool has a parent root, which is just pay tav. These are the ancient biblical uh, signs for the pay, which appears on the right, and the tav, which appears on the left. The pay means mouth, and the tav is the idea of a mark or a marker. So together we have a picture of perhaps um, an, an open hole in the ground where we're going to stick our flagpole so that our, our flag can fly high and everyone can see where we are. Uh, this is the picture of the fool, of the person who is open to anything. He's open to receive any kind of marker. The word pot is used um, just twice in Tanakh. In the first place, it's talking about a hinge. And in the second place, it refers to a secret place. 1 Kings 7.50 And the bowls and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold and the hinges of gold, both of the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house, to wit, of the temple. A hinge is kind of a hidden thing. We can see the two plates on the outside, but the pin that connects the two plates where the holes are, that pin, that flagpole, goes. Uh, that, that thing is actually hidden from sight. Isaiah 3:17. Therefore the Lord, which does say there Adonai, it's not Yudhevah, therefore Adonai will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and Yahweh will discover their secret parts. In other words, they will be made bare. From this parent root, we have the word patach, which might be a verb that you're familiar with. It means to open. Genesis 8:6. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And we know that he is opening this window for the dove, or the, initially the raven, to fly out. Exodus 21.33 And if a man shall open a pit, or if a man shall dig a pit, and not cover it, and an ox or ass fall therein. So by the same token, if something is open, so something can go out, then if a pit, a big hole in the ground is open, something can go in. And uh, this is something you do not want your animal to fall in a big hole in the ground. An interesting verse in Isaiah 22:22, 22, 22, And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. So whoever has the key is in charge of opening and closing the door. We see this verse, uh, this concept again in Revelation talking about Yeshua, that he is the one that holds the key to the house of David. What he opens, none can shut, and what he shuts, none can open. We're going to handle these two roots together. They are similarly related by the Pei Tav, and they both mean suddenly. Uh, there's Pitom, uh, which means suddenly, and peta is an instant of something happening suddenly. If you are in Israel, uh, you will hear this phrase frequently, mapitom. It literally means what suddenly, but uh, when you're in a situation and you're expecting something to happen and something different happens, it's not what you expect, people say mapitom. What happened? Why did this suddenly change around? The other word is peta which also means uh, suddenly. Proverbs 6, 15. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Pitom. Peta, suddenly he shall be broken without remedy. Isaiah 30, 13. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out as a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly, pitom, at an instant, lefeta.
As we said earlier, the Father never leaves us without a remedy for our situation. What is the remedy for the simpleton, for the petty? Psalm 1, 1 and 2. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. There is a difference between Eastern or New Age meditation and meditation according to the ways of Yahweh. The goal of Eastern meditation is to empty yourself and then if you empty yourself, we have just read that you are a fool. You're a big open hole waiting for anything to come in. But according to the ways of Yahweh, meditation is to fill your mind with his word, with his Torah, day and night. Psalm 119.11 Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Again, the protection is knowing the word. Again, it's not only what goes in, but what comes out. Mark 7.20 And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. On the other hand, Deuteronomy 8.3, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh doth man live. So is there a word that comes out of a man which defiles a man, but the word which comes out of the mouth of the Father, that is life itself. Psalm 19, 7. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple, making, giving wisdom to the petty, to the simpleton, the foolish one. Psalm 116, 6. Yahweh preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Therefore, we must rely on him, because we are all, in one sense, born in a simple way. The human being is the only animal that must learn every single thing. There is no uh, innate behavior in a human being as there are in the animals. We must rely on him. And then if we are simple, it says here that he will preserve us. Next time we'll go on to another word uh, along this path, this path of darkness. In the meantime... Tasimata inayam al keep your eye in the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.